She a modern day penny lane. She my drug, yeah, my Novocaine. Hold me down when I go away. Go with them words, she know what to say. And when I get low, she <clears> make <throat> me feel good. When I get old, she gon' call me. What's up, guys? We're she back. Colin Morrison. We are here at another installment of Scummy on Club. I got a real special guest, Chris Jonesen from Detroit. Now he's from California. <laughs> I think we're here in recovery today, so I kind of feel you're not jonesing for the stuff we used to jones for, correct? That's right. We're doing good now. We're doing good now. I've been seeing now. a lot of good stuff about you. I got a bunch of notes. I think it's kind of cheesy interview. I want you to tell cheesy me, interview. what do you got going on, man? Who is Chris jonesing, dude? Man, yo, thank you for having me, bro. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Um, Jones and dude, Jones and Chris is just Chris Jones, man. Yeah. Alcoholic, sober, musician. Where Jones and come from? It's funny, man. I was in rehab, yeah. and um, I had brought my studio. I was recording an album in treatment, right? And I'm on the phone with my homie, the guy, like the old friend I used to run with, and I had just like kind of decided I never had a rap name. You know, yeah, I was yeah, in a yeah. group, and I, I, there was no rap name. And I'm talking to my buddy. I'm like, yo, man, I cannot call myself. Chris Jones yeah because like in rehab everyone was always like Chris Jones Chris <laughs> Jones like that whole Mike Jones thing and I'm like I can't do it and he's like well what about what about Jonesen and I was like yeah I kind of like that and he's like you know because like your last name's Jones and and you're in rehab yeah <laughs> and I was like perfect so perfect <laughs> so I thought about it for like a day and was just like sign me up man yeah and it's how, stuck yeah that's exactly yeah it's stuck man and that's how that's how it happened I like it, man. Yeah. How was it? Uh, how was it growing up in Detroit? You know, from for, you know, for me, Southern Cal, Southern Southern California kid. You see uh, all these movies and stuff. Seems like it's pretty hardcore for uh, in, in for Detroit? a white boy out there. Yeah. Oh I don't know. man, look. Let's let me just keep it all the way a hundred. Uh, from around Detroit, right? But my parents lived in the suburbs, and I certainly spent my fair share of time doing hood rat shit with my friends yeah, down, yeah. downtown or whatever but uh Detroit's cool man I got a lot of love for that city and it certainly shaped uh who I am today I think yeah. that the city has has like an energy man it has like a resilience in it you know what I mean mm -hmm. and um I think that I kind of I like to think that I embody that a little bit you know so That's love right. for Detroit how was it growing up there? Was it? That was cool, man. Yeah. Just regular, you know, doing random stuff. Like I was in I BMX as a kid, so we had trails all over the place and rode around, and uh, and then you know did whatever kids do, man. Just high school, chase chicks, That's you know, it. drink, party, whatever. Same typical stuff. Yeah, dude. No, it's like everywhere. You yeah, know? yeah. I hear you. I hear you, man. What? Uh, how was school when you were a kid? Were you pulling it? Yeah, man. I did. I. You know, like, I did. I I did better than all right. Like I would do super well when I applied myself, and then, um, but I skipped a lot of class. It was whatever, you know. And I mean, my youth was funny. It was like I was like the good bad kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was always in trouble, always arrested, in trouble. But like, but yeah. like authority figures and stuff. Like we had a cool relationship. You know what I mean? Like me and the respectful. Yeah, yeah, super. And so like the I remember the cop. I feel like every school had a cop in it you know what I mean so like me and him were like cool but like yeah, he'd yeah. always be like searching me <laughs> you know what I mean? but it was come on Chris. it was cool you know uh so yeah man I mean growing up was cool school was fine college I mean is like kind of like I started like getting more into music and more into an alternative lifestyle I, I was say, about to know say know when I mean? did music really hit your life was that when you were a kid or you know after high school when I was young man I um I've, I remember, and like it's hard to like really say, you know what I mean? Like these memories are so old at this yeah, point, yeah. you know? But I, I always say that I wrote my first lyrics when I was in like fourth grade, like fourth or fifth grade. Like it was, I was super, super young. And um, I don't know, like my, my mom used to write poetry when she was a kid, right? But like there's no, no one in my family is a musician. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know really where it came from. Lots of music in the house, like my parents, love music but like no one did it uh anyway man i started yeah writing lyrics when i was in like fourth or fifth grade and then i started playing guitar in like seventh or eighth grade and um i mean i would dude i would write songs like i have binders i still in my closet in my parents house just like songs that i wrote as a kid like all really? like, 
like, dude, I'm like real angry. You know what I mean? Like, what do you have to be complaining about, bro? You like, like 12 years old, you know? Yeah. And you're like, the world's out to get me, bro. <laughs> you know? So, so do you like think you're kind of channeling some of that negative energy into your music rather than taking it out on the streets? Was that good for you back then? I mean, I was doing both. I mean, okay. it was certainly going, taking it out on the streets and, and putting it in the music. But uh, to answer the second part of your question, like, yeah, it was super good for me. You know what yeah. I mean? It was super good. It's just expression, bro. Like, yeah. everybody has some sort of outlet. You know what I mean? Some sort, sort of way to, like, express yourself and get, get what's in here out, you know? And it's therapeutic, and it certainly was, you know? It's not to say I didn't still get in trouble and, you know, whatever. Yeah. It was like, you know... But it was cool. So what, uh, you know, we're here in Recovery Today magazine. Recovery so some, Today. <laughs> something yeah. had to have happened in your life where drugs fell into your lap. How was that? Was that, uh, you know, high school parties and then dabbled to the next step? Or did the music world kind of introduce you to that a little bit faster? How did that all come into play? Dude, no, nothing like that, man. There was no instance. There was no nothing, dude. It was... Like I was destined to be to be sober, you know what I mean? Like I just the first I remember, dude. Like I used to drink my mom's boxed wine when I was like ten or eleven for no reason, you know. Like I remember they used to. I lived in an apartment, and like the living room, you know, and the whatever was like down at one end. And I remember like like had these like snapshot memories of just like being young, playing it like fucking messing around with my brother mm -hmm. and like running down there and like filling up little Dixie cups of wine and just like slamming them and then like going back to like playing with like Legos or whatever, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like whatever you do at 10, you know what I'm saying? And like, so, and that was for no reason, dude. It was just, I just did it like, fit, dude, just. Did you guys enjoy, you know, being yeah. a little bit drunk, so. Yeah, dude, and then I started smoking weed and then it was. Um, How old were you? 12. 12. 12. Yeah, so I was smoking weed at 12, so I was like drinking a year or two before then, and then smoking weed, and then got into harder stuff when I was a little bit older, probably like 19, 20. Mm -hmm. um, and it just progressed from there, man. You know, it just, just progressed. What was the harder stuff? We're talking heroin, coke, meth, any? Coke. Coke, that coke. was it? Yeah, pills. I never, I, pretty much everything short of sticking a needle in my arm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I never, never shot heroin, but um, pills, coke, you know, like psychedelics, man, yeah, <laughs> acid yeah, yeah. truths, you know, whatever. Like, we were just party animals, dude. Like, you know, I, like the, the name of my first band, for example, was Out of Control. And I have that, like, tatted, you know, across my whole chest, Out of Control. And we named the, the band that because, like, that's, that was our nickname, like, the click, like, that other people, like, gave us. <laughs> was, like, out of, you all are just out of control. And so, dude, we, that, yeah, that's just what we did, man. We just partied got in trouble, we're rowdy, and you know, like, I'm gonna be 100% honest, man, like I, like, I have super fond memories from those days, you know what I mean? I spent a lot of time with uh, guys that I'm fortunate to still be close with, some, like, real, real, like, brothers from another mother kind of thing, you know, and I have really cool relationships with those dudes, and I spent a lot of time laughing and having fun, you know? I, I hear you, man, because, like, <laughs> I'm sober, and I, some of the best times of my life to a point was when I was yeah. super jacked up, you know, and we, we laugh about it. I think it, you could do that once you're sober and you have a solid, yes, solid, uh, you know, structure in your life. You can look back at that, laugh more, learn about it, you know, but, 100. you know, just knowing where you're at today, when did it, when did you think you had a problem or were you just going along with it? You know, this is how it's going to be. I don't think I have a problem. I think I could stop this at any time. Were you that kind of an addict or no. did the word addict ever even pop up into your mind at that time? No, man, I think, I, you know, at least for me, man, I didn't, I didn't know it was like a serious issue until it was too late. Yeah. You know, until it was too late, only in hindsight, do you, can you look back at least for me and see like, you know, there was the line. Like I remember in hindsight, like th that time in my life and like those couple months period and like what was going on like I can look back and go that was it you know like but if it wasn't that 
that time, like th th those few like experiences or whatever, it would have been something else, yeah. you know, down the road. Like, so it would have been something else. Like I said, man, I feel like I was destined to be here, you know, and sober. But uh, So that line, that line that a lot of us have passed, now you're saying you remember that line, but I'm sure you know that you passed that by a long shot, right? Oh my God, by such a long shot, bro. Okay. Like over, <laughs> way overshot it. Way, yeah, <laughs> so done. way overshot it. You can't even see it, it's so far away right? now. And then, but you don't see it, at least I didn't see it when I crossed it. You know, it's yeah. like I said, it's only in hindsight. I think every addict, it's like that. Yeah. You know, I, until I you get so sober, if you're lucky enough to get sober, sure. then you realize the shit you did. You, you just, it's very clear once you get sober of all the stuff you've done, how horrible it was, and that's when you can start to make your amends. And it's funny because all addicts, we're all the same, you know? Yeah. So at that point in your life when maybe it was starting to get a little rocky, did any of your family members, friends, true friends kind of call you out on some of the bullshit or you just kept on going? Absolutely, man. Both. They yeah. called me out and I kept on going, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I think I was, I was around 24 when it got bad, you know, when that's when I became physically addicted to alcohol, right? Like my drug of choice was alcohol and uh, I'm talking, you know, like shaking, twitching. You e had to have it just to survive. Every day. Yeah. Couldn't function, man. Could not function. I couldn't go in the studio. Like I, my hands would shake so bad I couldn't use the keyboard, I couldn't use the mouse, I couldn't write. I mean, it was, I mean, it was bad. And it went on like that for a few years. And during that time, my close friends, the guys who I was in the band with, family members, they all took notice, yeah. right, all of them. And then kind of what, what ended up happening was I, I was arrested. I'd gone a few years without getting in trouble, which I was super cool. And um, I got arrested again in San Diego. And at that point, called my dad and was like, yo, man, I should probably try and get sober. And uh, he was like, yeah, you should, <laughs> you know? And so I went home, he- uh, That's huge right there. Not a lot of people, struggling addicts can admit that, you know? It takes an intervention where people have to, you know, carry them into a rehab, but you knew it. That's I, commendable, yeah. man. I, I suppose, bro, it's, it's just like, not Man, a lot of people can do that. I guess, but it's, I've seen some people do some pretty amazing things, man. And I feel like if you can, the trick is to, to be able to take action in that moment of clarity. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Um, and for whatever reason, that day when I got out of jail, don't, don't keep, keep it 100, man. Like when I got out of jail, it was raining in Diego and I was downtown. I walked on the highway in the rain until I could see a liquor store, walked down the exit ramp, went to the liquor store, bought booze, sat outside, drank like a pint, and then called for a ride home, back wow. to the house. And then when I got home, called my dad and was like, yo, I should probably get sober. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I would love to say, man, that that was it, it was cool, I went to AA and like, been sober since. And not the case, man, I went, I went home, that's when I went. My pops took me to a, a doctor, did some blood work and all this, and blood work came back super bad. You know, liver was shutting down, and and then, um, you know, during that during that month I was home, dude. I mean, I was lying to people. I was I was saying I was going to get cigarettes from the corner store, and I would buy booze and like. Were you telling people you were sober? Yeah. At that point? Yeah. Yeah, dude. My mother, my 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 mother was, didn't trust me to like take the meds that the doctor prescribed, like the detox med and detox meds. Yeah. And so like she held on to them and would like set alarms on her phone, right? And like, come wake me up in the middle of the night. Like, yo, you gotta take your meds, you know? And dude, the whole time I'm out in the garage, like drinking booze, you yeah. know? I probably strung together a few days, you know? Probably like three or four days max. And they thought I'd been clean for a month. And I came back to Diego and then moved to LA like the next month and bottomed out a year later and pops again and just showed up at my door and was like, yo man, rehab or homeless. And so it's a very long winded answer. Like, yeah, people notice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah, family members intervene. Yeah. So they took you to rehab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
they, uh, you, you know, like, th they had never gone through this before, you know what I mean? So, like, they didn't quite know, like, what was up. So, my pops... I mean, that whole time since, uh, the first time since you were saying you were sober, were you doing that the whole way till the second time when your dad came to your door? Or were they, like, they knew you were bullshitting? No, they knew I was bullshitting. Okay. Yeah. Were they, you still they going to AA to. meetings and everything? No, no, I never went. You okay. know what I mean, dude? I was like court ordered to AA and like groups and stuff like that, like my entire teenage years. Yeah. And so I was pretty anti. Like I didn't want to get sober. I didn't want to have anything to do with AA or groups or like anything that I perceived as like uncool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, oh, no, get that out of here, man. I don't I want anything to do I with it. You. And so no, when I got to LA, you know, I just, there's distance, you know, they're in Detroit, I'm in LA, you know, and so like they could hear, there were certainly times on the phone or whatever where my dad would be like, yo, like, you're faded right now, aren't you? <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I did a decent job of like pretending that my life was okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? A decent job. And eventually it just, it all unraveled, man, I you know, hear. and then land, you know, then in treatment we go, you know. This is your interview, but my story's the same. It's crazy. <laughs> it, 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 I think that's crazy, like, with, within addicts, like, every story's about the same. It truly is. I certainly got some underlying see, yeah, things that are, like, sick pretty similar. twisted the stories can be when a regular person would hear, they wouldn't even believe half of the shit, but <laughs> the stuff we do, it's, uh, it's a miracle we are here. Straight you know? up. So, True. California, California, you go to rehab. Did you go to rehab or did your parents make you go to rehab? They made me go. They made you go. They gave me a choice, man. They said either go to rehab or they're, or, done. Or they're done. You know what I mean? And it was that, was that looked like at that moment in my life that looked like homeless and that looked like no contact with my fam, you yeah. know? And, um, man, I'm super fortunate. Like, I got a, I got a family that, that, I, that I love to death, man. You know, and uh, a lot of people don't have that. And so, mm -hmm. like, for me, that prospect of, like, not being able to, like, call my house once a week and, like, say what's up to my mom and my pops, like, was, uh, it was hard to deal with. You yeah. know what I mean? And, that, and again, it's one of those things where, like, I wish I could say, like, that was the reason I got sober. But it wasn't, man. I mean, I was just trying to, at first, I was just trying to buy time. You know, like, I didn't know what was next, but I knew that I had, like, a grand to my name and nowhere to go. And I was like, okay, this seems like... Buy time for what? Did you, what was your goal in this part of your life? Did you want to make it, you want to make it in the music industry? Oh, for sure. That was your number one goal. Yeah, okay. yeah, man. And when I say buy time, I mean just buy time to figure out my next move. Yeah, what's you know what next? I mean? Yeah. Like, it was, I mean, it was rehab or homeless. And so I was like, all right, like, I'll just go here and At whatever. At that time, did you think that there could be a shot of you making it? while being intoxicated or you knew like dude there's no way i gotta go to rehab then make that next move or did you kind of think i could probably do this dude yeah i totally thought i could do this bro <laughs> like i totally did i was totally like in so much denial yeah like yeah, yeah. thinking thinking that like i, I can't go to rehab bro i'm gonna miss out that was like my biggest thing right yeah. is like i can't go to rehab the world's gonna pass me by. Like, I have all these moves to make. Yeah. Don't you know? If I go to rehab, they're all done. Right? It's over <laughs> for me if I go to rehab. You know what I mean? And that's like what I, the story that I would tell myself in, in those yeah. moments and in those days. But little did I know, I mean, dude, it's, it saved my life and yep. made everything else possible. Like, it created a life beyond my wildest dreams. And getting sober helped me achieve things that otherwise had evaded me and eluded me my whole life that I was never able to get to like get my hands on, and um, dude, it just changed my whole perception of the world and people and just just everything. Every, Everything's better. It's everything smells, man. looks, everything you do is better. Like you do, I feel up. it's all about the little things in life too. You know? It is. Back in the past, all these big things. Now you you, you got a chance to breathe take it all in and I tell people dude I wake up like it's Christmas every day people are like what are you talking about you don't get it. like remember the feeling when you were 12 years old and you didn't need anything in your system and you were just pumped to go build jumps on your BMX bike or go fucking make a fort like yeah that's how it is yeah with nothing in your system man so straight up 
It's a I like uh, thing. I like hearing how you feel about that, man. Uh, I like that. So you go to rehab, thirty oh. days. Well, that's what they told me. That's, okay. That was that was like the hook, right? The hook. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hook. So I went. Oh, just joking. Ninety days. That's exactly it. Oh wow. You, straight up, that's what happened. And so, look, I, I found the coolest rehab, right? Like, I went to a few spots. And like just checked them out and then I was in this one and uh, I was sitting down with the owner and my father and uh, I asked the guy I said I was like can I bring my recording studio and he was like yeah you just can't bring any speakers and I was like well I got headphones he's like then bring it and I was like sign me up yeah that's I'll, pretty rad. I'll come you know and so I brought the studio uh, to treatment and they told me they're like yo just 30 days like you'll be good after 30 right and then like you get halfway through that and they're like yeah you should probably stay for another 30 days, another man. 30 you know like just because you know whatever and that was i was upset man like i hadn't let go yet you know and um and then so i signed up for the 60 and then halfway through that they're like you should probably stay for another another 30 and i got upset and they almost kicked me out right and they're like you know um either like do the deal or go somewhere else, man, you know? And uh, at that point, uh, I do something, just something shifted. And what it was for, what it was for me was like, I gave up the idea that I was in control when I got to leave. That was it. Mm -hmm. Like I just decided like, all right, you tell me, I'm cool. I just decided that that moment I was like, fine, I'm cool, I'm chilling, whatever. I'm gonna do these group fine you know and just let go of that and then in doing that my mind opened to recovery and I didn't even That's know it you know what I mean and yeah like everything that, I didn't even realize that happened though you know what I mean cool yeah it, it was cool it was it was cool Were you enjoying your time there I mean what what was the first I remember my first time where I think I woke up I'm like oh my god like you mean I don't need heroin I, I could get through the day feeling fine with nothing in my system. And it, it took a while to snap to actually think like, holy shit, I did it. You know, because I was high for like 15 years. Did any of that hit you? Like where, you know, you woke up and maybe you had one solid day where you felt good and you realized you didn't need alcohol. I had, a, I had an experience like that, yeah. And it was, I was recording. And it was the first song that I did in rehab, right? And I'd never in my entire life, I'm talking about done multiple albums, whatever, I've ne I had never done a song sober. And I hadn't even thought about that. Mm -hmm. And after I did the first one in my room in treatment, that, that hit me. I was like, wow, I just did this sober. Wow. Was it and better? Yeah, man. And I just got excited. You know what I mean? Trash. Like I felt like the goosebumps and I was like, wow. Because you can do it like it's right. doable yeah man and you have i had my whole identity was wrapped up in who i thought i was yeah right like i didn't know who i was without drinking drugs partying going on tour da -da 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 -da, right that's who i was i wasn't like my my core values and beliefs i wasn't that i was like this dude that did these things yeah you know and and so when i had to get sober like i thought that was all gone you know what I mean? I thought like that was all leaving me. I know what you and, mean. It, yeah. It's like you still have it, but kind of have to tweak it a little bit. Right, but you don't know that at the time, yeah. right? You only realize that after the fact, and then you can explain it. You're like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like the sponsees and whatever. It's like, no, trust me. You're going to be the same, just like different. Different. You know what I mean? So get That's to do why we got to try and tell people out there, you know, they, they see your story, my story. It doesn't happen overnight. No. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. So don't think just by going to rehab that you're going to pop out and, and be this whole different person. You definitely have to put work into it. Yeah. You will get the life you've never, ever have dreamt about. It will happen. Over time, work at it, and you will see the turnaround like you. 100%, man. So 90 days in, did you make the whole turnaround? Are you back? Started feeling good? Yeah, I started feeling super good. And dude, really by the time I left there and went to sober living, like that desire to like drink and use was gone. Like I started working with a sponsor about halfway in, right around the time where they told me, uh, 
that I was like either like get with it or get out. Yeah, yeah. Started working with a sponsor. And I mean, I was in the steps. My life was good. I felt good. I had created some good relationships. I had a, you know, community. And uh, man, I went to sober living and like, I was just on my grind, man. I and mean, it, it I went was away. just the, working. The feeling of wanting to drink yeah. too. Yeah, it was gone. That's another dude. thing like this, this magazine, it's our interview. My goal in this is like, for us to help these people, sure you know? Yeah. And I think that's perfect that those feelings do go away. You don't know when, you can't put a number on it. Like, dude, go to rehab, 15 days in, it's gonna go away. You don't know, but it, it will <laughs> happen, you know? Yeah. Like, where you just, eh, I'm over it, you know? It, dude, it just, it wasn't appealing anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? I just, it had lost its, its intrigue. You yeah. know what I mean? Like. I found like, this new love of doing everything sober now, yeah. knowing that you can do it and yeah. everything you're doing is a million times better. A million times you better. You just didn't man. know you can get to that point. No, no. You know, you just like you don't believe you can get to that yeah. point. You know what I mean? Because when you when you're new, dude, I mean that old way of living and the old way of thinking and whatever, that's all you know. That's all you, you know. You know what I mean? You gotta so relearn you, everything. Right, and you spend a lifetime developing that way of thinking and being and engaging with the world and whatever and and to have to to change that to believe that being sober is possible let alone that you're gonna enjoy it yeah you yeah, know yeah. what I mean like I hear. is is almost impossible it just happens over time I wrote a whole bunch of notes but I'm not gonna do that interview so Chris uh, my second question that's kind of lame right the on. only thing that d does pop out on me is that that's you right. wrote a whole album in yeah rehab. yeah man sure did done done get him out of here only thing I wanted to ask yeah what is that you yeah. wrote your whole album in sober living yeah man in so in, in rehab and sober living most That's in, huge most in rehab and uh, it's called live from rehab and uh, it's dude it's a solid album I I it did it did pretty well and um, it was it was certainly cool, man, having the studio in there and having that outlet, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, man, there's not a lot of like at least the rehab I went to, man. It was like th this. It was scheduled. Like you were up at like seven oh, uh, and meditation yeah, yeah. and then breakfast and then they took you. They, I got to go to the gym every day, so I got back to working out. And then it's like group, group, group with like half hour in between yeah. dinner, AA meeting, and then like back home for like ten steps. And yeah, like yeah. that dude, that was every day, you know. So I would be in between groups, like running back to my room, trying to like knock out a few bars, you know what I mean? And then like get as many songs written as I could during the week and then like lay them down on Saturday and Sunday. You dude, know? that's sick. Yeah. And uh, I remember, dude, this one- Did you put that C that album out yeah. when you got out? Yeah, it's on Datpiff. It, I never put it on iTunes, but you can, it's a free download on Datpiff. You right. can still get it today. We'll put that in the article for you guys to check it out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, this fun. The one, the one of the texts one time I was in there recording and she comes upstairs, she's like, yo, like knocking on the door, she's like, yo, LL Cool J, we gotta get out of here, stop rapping. We got a <laughs> meeting to go to, let's go. It was so funny, she's the homie. So what's next, man? After rehab, how's your life now? How much time of sobriety you got? Six. Six years like Six me, years, man. Six yeah. It's only getting better, huh? Yeah, man. I tell people that too. Like, it's weird. Every, every year, every day, it just gets better. It gets just better. It makes does. Makes sobriety number one, and everything else will follow, like, in yeah. weird ways. You know, I remember when I was newly in, in recovery, going to the AA meetings, you hear all the old timers saying about all these miracles, and I was like, just fuck you guys, man. Like, you guys don't even know me. Like, just how much stuff I've messed up in my life. Like, there's no way. Yeah. But, you know, now looking, yeah. it was all true. All of it. I have 100% so many miracles happening every day, you do, and we're not getting paid to say this stuff, you know, all we're doing is telling our story, and I think your story is amazing, I think your story is going to reach out to a lot of people, man, I mean, it, it's, it's classic, what's next for you? Well, thanks for the kind words, man, straight up. I truly um, mean it. So what's next, man, you know, I just uh, keep making music, keep trying to to navigate the business, and and develop my skill set, right? I'm always trying to learn something. I'm always reading. I'm always, you know, testing new strategies. You know what I mean? So um, that's it, man. I just put out music, continue doing what I love, uh, working with guys in the program, and just trying to 
trying to live every day with a smile on my face. You're and still going to meetings? And yeah. Very oh, involved. Yeah, man, absolutely. Good. You, you know, not as not as involved as I was like in rehab where you're going seven days a week, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm at a few you meetings a, a week. You have a program that works oh, for you. 100, man. I'm still in the book, still doing this, stay in the steps with my sponsor, stay in the steps with other guys. Um, I have a solid group of core friends that, that I hang out with and um, yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I try and like, I mean, I have a program. Yeah, yeah, that's You know sick, what I mean? Yeah. Got to, got to. Dude, uh, amazing story, man. Anything you want to give a little shout out before we wrap it up? I would just shout out the whole crew, <laughs> man. Shout, shout out you. Shout what out do you got coming today. up next? Anything? Where can people see your find oh, your music? Right oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Penny Lane just dropped. It's doing right. super well. So you can look up Jones and Penny Lane, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes. I mean, any of that. Yeah, yeah. New record, Tell Me Lies, comes out on 420. Ironically, 420. <laughs> gonna ask you about that but that yeah. just happened yo man music drops on fridays and like okay. friday was that was the day you know uh so tell me lies on 420 and then i have more records one a month man pretty much for the whole year um so yeah it's it's i am jones on instagram jones and music on right. twitter google whatever man you know i think uh, i think you have a bright future and people are definitely going to be hearing a lot yeah, out of man. you man i'm uh Dude, I thank you very much Yo, for coming in here, man. My man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Great story. Thank and you, uh, for you guys out there, I hope you gather just a little bit from this guy's story. For him and me, the only way we could get clean was rehab. There's really no way around it. So that's something you guys out there that might be dealing with addiction, you know, hit up sober recovery. Make that first step. Chris, me, our lives are amazing only because we made sobriety number one and look at us, we're working for some sobriety magazine. Who would have thought that anything is possible, you guys? So real. Thank you, Chris, so and uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next. Not- <laughs> I was so close. So close. On us. And on the Bible and I promise Shorty got a body and she flawless Yeah She been constant Straight shooting up this on us And on the Bible and I promise Shorty got a body and she flawless She a modern day gang gang She my drug, you my Novocaine I'm a doctor